with the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Laws of, Chip, laws of 1975, of the State of New Jersey. Adequate notice of this meeting of the South River Board of Education was approved, excuse me, was provided in the following manner. On December 3rd, 2018, the notice was faxed and mailed to the following newspapers, the Home News Tribune and the Sentinel. On December 3rd, 2018, the notice was delivered to the office of the South River Borough Clerk and posted at the Board of Education Administration building. And also on December the 3rd, the notice was posted at the South River Borough Clerk office. Mr. Andre? Here. Mr. Bazak? Here. Mrs. Beck? Here. Mrs. Bush? Mrs. Bush, yes, here. Mr. Nielsen? Here. Mr. Rosano? Here. Mrs. Urbanic? Here. Mr. Wailudo? Here. Ms. Cassiano? Here. All board members have copies of the notice in October and in November and September. Board members, please raise your hand the minutes. Move the minutes in accordance with board policy. Second. Third, second, by Mr. Easter. Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Mr. Facility? There are <coughs> nine items on the agenda for tonight. Spotlight Dance Academy, the high school private graduation, various times, Borough of South River, the South River Knights, the elementary school PTA, and the South River Little League. Board members are present. Motion to move the use of facilities in accordance with board policies. Second. Mrs. Nielsen. Mrs. Beck, comments. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Are you okay for Mrs. Street? Um, yes, I just have one update before reading the financial report. Um, the Finance Committee met this evening um, with Mr. Stankowitz from Samuel Klein and Company. It was discussed our, at our exit interview with Mr. Stankowitz. Since the state has not yet provided the school's districts district with statistical information relating to the post-employment benefits other than pensions, the final audit cannot be completed. However, the audit indicates that the district is financially sound and, pr and we are proud to announce that for the 18th consecutive year is without any recommendations. As soon as the state does release those um, additional data, we will be able to have Mr. Stankowitz come back and do a full report with the presentation to the Board of Ed. If I may, Mr. Yes. in light of what Mrs. Cruz just said, 18 straight years without a recommendation, I just want to congratulate Mr. Kokuska and his staff for doing an outstanding <coughs> job. We have one of the best groups in the state of New Jersey over there. So Thanks. congratulations. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I'm just going to read my statement and then... Um, be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby certifies that it is in receipt of the financial report which, which indicates that no major account has been overexpended and that sufficient funds are available to meet the district's financial obligations for the remainder of the fiscal year. The Finance Committee recommends that the reports of the Board Secretary and Treasurer of School Monies for October 2018 be approved and I so move. Second. And Mrs. Cruz, second by Mr. Nielsen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> I turn to the superintendent of education. Thank you, Mr. Oyelita. So a lot of uh, district happenings in, in uh, December. Our students have been quite busy this month. We've had a number of chorus, band performances, holiday-related activities. Um, our newly formed middle school robotics team participated in their first competition at Liberty Science Center this month and took second place. Um, in their very first competition, we're very proud of them. Our Step It Up Club at the high school created and posted another video um, which showcased teachers surprising students and telling them the reason um, why they are the reason they love to come to work. And um, we see on our Facebook page that that video has been shared and reshared um, over 17,000 views on that video. Um, it's, it's really beautiful if you haven't had a chance to, uh, to take a look. And Victoria was an integral part of, uh, of getting that video together and posted. 
Uh, we inducted and honored 23 students into our National Honor Society this month and two alumni into our Wall of Fame as well. Um, I had the pleasure of going uh, two Saturdays ago to our breakfast with Santa, um, which was um, a fundraiser for our adopt a family We are in the process of being able to support about thir 33 South River um, families and the work of our National Honor Society students as well as Deb Zeman, um, our administrative um, assistant, um, has really resulted in being able to provide a good Christmas for these three, uh, 33 families in need. So we're really happy about that. The program um, was so well attended. The kids were having so much fun. Um, all different types of activities, games, um, giveaways, a DJ. Um, it was just a really, really good time. And kids had the opportunity to write some letters to Santa. And I collected some, just a few to share with you. Um, one of our very clever South River kiddos um, wanted to be very specific <laughs> about what they were asking for Santa. <laughs> so that there was no confusion. Um, somebody here asked for a Tesla Model 3. Model 3. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, specific. <laughs> very specific. Um, this one says uh, she wants a sweater with you on it with a picture of you, Santa, on the sweater. Oh. Oh. Um, yeah, and also says that she will give food to uh, Santa's reindeers and to him on Christmas nice. night. <laughs> um, this one wants a bouncy house, a computer, Nintendo, so popular. I saw a lot of requests for Nintendos. Um, big toys, car toys, so a lot of the classics, in addition to all our good the requests toys. for <laughs> Xboxes and all That's that cool. good stuff. So definitely a great event, <coughs> really well attended, um, and a real, real success. Um, just really in, in a good, uh, good opportunity for our families to get what they need for Christmas. And our um, superintendent's focus group at the high school is also meeting this coming week on Thursday. We're going to have lunch together again, and this time we're going to make some gingerbread houses together. Um, so we'll chat and we'll make some gingerbread houses and, um, and we'll have another opportunity to collect that feedback from our high school students just to really see how the high school program is working for them and what we can always do to make it, um, to make it better. Okay. Um, a preschool update, and I actually have an even newer update for you this evening. Um, registration for a newly expanded and full grant funded preschool went really well. That registration happened the last week of November, and uh, we received more applications than we have space for, actually, in the program. Um, so we were going to use some different measures in order to select and be able to um, develop a criteria to allow for um, who would be able to, to reap the benefits of the program. But this morning, we really took another look at our grant budget and, um, and the needs of the community, and we've decided to open up another preschool classroom this year as opposed to waiting for next year, which means that we will be able to serve all of the families who registered four-year-olds right now for the free preschool program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to be a, a big effort to get another class up and running, but we definitely think it's worthwhile. The only difference will be that for that additional class, um, that program will start February uh, 4th as opposed to January 2nd so that we can staff it and all the resources, furniture, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So this was a good way not to say no to anybody who, who needs it, and, um, and we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, new courses at the high school. The instruction uh, committee recently met with our director of curriculum and instruction who presented a proposal for updated courses at the high school for the 1920 school year. Um, the new courses are meant to better align with current post-secondary opportunities. So we took a look at where the jobs are, what the careers are, um, and we are really trying to match up courses to those opportunities that students will benefit from once they graduate. Um, course descriptions, prerequisites, and selections are going to be available to students much earlier this year than they have been in the past, so that students can really take a look at the, cor at the course offerings and make um, a, good, a good decision for themselves. We've also revised the scheduling process um, just to give our students a better experience when it comes to scheduling and making those <coughs> real difficult decisions. So
So continue to look for information on that. Um, like I said, we are going to be starting much earlier. We didn't begin last year until about May. We're looking at starting that process probably about February this year. Okay. And DPR, one of the items on the superintendent's report agenda today is the district performance review. Um, and this is something that you will see for your approval this evening. But recently a committee of teachers, administrators, parents, and board members met to discuss the district's performance review document. And the way this works is we basically look at um, different, um, different indicators um, in personnel, finance, instruction, governance, operations, uh, and we do a self-assessment. We conduct a self-assessment with all of those stakeholders um, in that conversation um, who are presented with information about each of these categories. So we, uh, we were able to give ourselves a 100% in all areas with the exception of instruction and program. That area, instruction and program, part of that score comes from our standardized testing scores, um, which are of course uh, calculated by the state. But even with, uh, with instruction and program, we were able to meet a self-assessment score of 81%, um, which the district needs a score of 80% in all areas in order to pass that QSAC review. So now that we did that self-assessment, we submitted it to the state and then representatives from the county will be here in the spring and they will ask for evidence to support that self-evaluation and they will give us um, either a confirmation of those self-assessment scores or they will ask us for more evidence or give us a different score. Um, but that will take place in the spring and the first step was to conduct this uh, performance review which is there for your approval tonight. And finally, I just wanted to wish our board and all of our South River families a wonderful holiday season and may it be filled with tons of joy and uh, good times. Thank you, Sylvie. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there a motion to accept the superintendent's report? Nielsen. Motion by Mr. Andre. Nielsen. Mr. Andre. Mr. Andre. Second. Mr. Andre. Any comments or questions? Phone comments? Oh, no. I was just going to point out no, Mr. Andre. I was going to mention that. Thank you for participating in the uh, report. Oh. Because it's your experience all the phases within the school system make sure you had a keen eye on exactly yeah. what our system has and mm -hmm. what not have you and those yeah. numbers are got to be pretty darn solid yeah. thank you so again thank you for your assistance of that. course thank you mr. Uh, mr. president if I may just comment with regard to the superintendent's report um, sure. we just had a really phenomenal superintendent's report and I just wanted to take this moment to commend Ms. Zercher for all the places that she has led our district. In this uh, short time that she's been with us, she's really led us to some very good areas, done a lot of good for the district. And I was gonna save this to the end, but it's very appropriate here. Uh, all the board members got this information, but I just want the public to know too that it's exemplified what she has done and that is why she was one of 70 superintendents nationwide to attend a uh, superintendent's leadership summit. And you need to be invited to this, and uh, it is well deserved. Thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. One Thank of you. 70 well nationwide. Yeah. So that is amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. Sophia, thank you for what you're doing for us. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, we have a, a presentation from Mr. Dorso, um, who will be reviewing uh, last year's period two uh, information on kids and suspensions. Wait, do we have that up on the screen? Yes. Coming? Yep, there it is. You need to move that screen just a minute. Yeah. There we go. It's a clip. Okay. 
Okay, so twice a year we have to report the SSDS report. Uh, it's a little convoluted in the reporting time period, so I'm just going to review that a little closely so you know exactly what we're looking at. So this is considered period two, and this is based on data from the second half of last school year, from January 1st through June 30th. Also a part of this report is two revisions from period one, and that's on data from September 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2017. This report is basically just an overview of the different incidents that we've had behaviorally, and also touches upon HIB and what we've done for HIB training. And we'll also highlight some of the good things that we have going on in district to support those initiatives and improve um, those uh, issues also. All right, so these are the sections that we'll be focusing on. Section A is a district-wide overview of the HIP trainings. Section B talks about primary school, elementary school, middle school, and high school. All right, so this, this section, the district-wide data, it refers to trainings and programs district-wide. I'm not exactly sure why all of the information that we report out on and train staff on per building isn't here. I have to look into that. But when we get into each building's report, you'll see the different HIP programs and trainings that we do. Right. What that basically means is that from January to June of last year, there was no training that everybody in the district attended together at the same time, that the trainings were done by school. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, so South, the primary school, um, other incidents were leading to removal too. That's basically a, a broad category that any other reason that doesn't fall into violence, vandalism, substance abuse, weapons, hit confirmed, that the student was removed from the, the day, at least a half a day. Self-explanatory for HIP trainings and HIP programs. And that's, just to be clear, that's the revised period one. So that's a revision from the reporting period, the beginning half of last school year. Reporting, pe reporting from this past period, from January to the end of June, uh, other incidents leading to removal, six. HIV allegations, one. HIV trainings, two. HIV programs, one. Section C, elementary school data. This is report period two. Other incidents leading to removal, 10. HIV allegations, 11. HIV trainings, two. HIV programs, five. South River Middle School. Again, this is reporting period two. Other incidents leading to removal, 80. HIV allegations, 12. HIV trainings, two. HIV programs, one. Clearly, we're targeting the 80 number as well as the uh, incidents and HIV allegations. The revised report for the high school. Other incidents leading to removal 71, HIV allegations 3, HIV trainings 1, HIV programs 1. The high school reporting period 2, and again this is an area that we're targeting district, well really with a district wide focus, but targeting the high school in particular. Other incidents leading to removal 183, HIV allegations 5, HIV trainings 4, and HIV programs 3. All right, so really as a, as a district, a lot of the conversations that we've had since I've been in district is really focusing on a district-wide mindset, so really a systems approach to make sure that we're consistent with our thought on how we're uh, intervening with students K through 12. I know that's come up quite a bit and that's an area of focus, so one of the things that our tools of the mind is our new preschool curriculum and that's really a, a program that focuses on social emotional learning, as is the Masonic model, which is our new model for intervention and referral services. Now I anticipate that you're gonna hear social emotional learning 
quite a bit for the next <coughs> couple of years. It's kind of hit its tipping point, really finally after uh, decades worth of research. So I think we're really taking a lead in this area and it's really important for all those high indicators with the HIV allegations and the removal from school, these are the system-wide things that are gonna improve those things for South Philly Public Schools. Just a very general overview of social and emotional learning. It's really a, an approach that focuses on interpersonal relationship skills. It's really, um, Daniel Goleman is one of the uh, thought leaders related to SEL. Uh, focuses on relationship skills, self-management, social awareness. We know that if students do well in these areas, their propensity for success in life and in school is increased. One of the things that the Masonic model focuses on is a uh, assets model. So if students, there's a list of 40 different assets um, ranging from support at home, reading uh, for pleasure, involvement in extracurricular activities, and the more assets a student has, the less likely they are to engage in negative behaviors. And that's really why we're focusing on that as a intervention model for interventional referral services. School-wide, these are just some of the things that we have in different schools going on, really throughout the school year. If you walk through the different hallways, you can see these posters, uh, bulletin board displays, throughout each different school. Currently in the elementary school, the 10 Days of Kindness is displayed. The how do, I sh how do you show respect hearts were in the middle school, that was from the Week of Respect. The Take a Step is a club that we have in the high school. That, is a, that was, uh, I believe, Victoria's initiative and doing very great work for the high school. Other things that, you know, throughout, we have shout outs at the elementary school on an ongoing basis. Red Ribbon Week was district-wide. That banner was from the high school. The slide on the left is a diversity presentation that was done at the end of last school year. These are other items that we had in the past and continue to have. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Okay. Continuing with the uh, committee reports, the athletic committee. I just have a few items tonight. Um, so in the um, facility use agreement, we have a uh, Pop Warner will be using high school uh, auditorium for their awards in January. I think their date, they're still trying to finalize which of the two dates. Little League signups will be in the high school by the cafeteria, um, January 10th to 31st on Thursday nights, 6.30 to 8.30. Um, all the winter sports are in se uh, seasons are going along. Um, the high school basketball, the boys will be doing a, um, both the boys and girls will be competing in the holiday tournaments. The boys will be doing one here in South River and the girls will be the one in Keensburg. The athletic trainer has five student assistants with nine more s students who are interested in uh, learning how to, that goes, how to do that. And then I was looking at the, from the fall sports, we have seven fall sports, um, 122 varsity letter winners, and 75 ath athletes had uh, first marking period honor roll. And then one other thing we mentioned, uh, the middle school robotics, they took second place in that competition. And my understanding is the reason they took second place is they had too many kids which is a horrible thing. They were only allowed to have so many apparently out on the field, and Mrs. Cordell wouldn't, from my understanding was, she wasn't saying anybody couldn't be there. So we took second place because we had too many students. So for a first year of a program, I think that's awesome. That is great. That is outstanding. And so concludes my report. We're pleased to hear that our involvement really is engaging in our environment.
Yeah, but I think like in the high in the high school competitions, they are very limited to how many students can be out on the field when they do competitions. They have to have so many at the at the pit during the competitions. Um, everybody can be in the stands watching, but they're they're limited to how many can be in different spots. And I don't think she was. I think it was. It wasn't that many, but she wasn't gonna stop them. Right. Not at this level. Not for the first competition. <coughs> so, it's like yeah. in football when there's too many players on the field, they get a penalty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Something. and and that and that was kind of like the penalty. Good yeah. So <laughs> good analogy. That's stuff you come up mm -hmm. with. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the supervisor of buildings and grounds has submitted his report. Uh, ongoing work is continuing at all of the schools where we always try to do maintenance rather than major repairs. Um, Mr. Blasia does a great job. Uh, winter is here. It's going to be a little bit tougher, too, as uh, attested in his report that there were many calls in the high school with regard to heating calls. So uh, it's, it's always something, right? Either it's too hot or it's too cold. Uh, we, and also, we were able to fill the vacancy that was created by a recent retirement. So I think we're pretty much in full swing with buildings and grounds. And um, that concludes my report. If anybody has any questions or comments. Thank you. FA 15 items this evening. One approved professional development workshops, grants fund 20, 2018-19 school year. Two, approve 2018-19 non-public security aid entitlement purchases for Pillars Preparatory Academy. Three, accept high school tuition student 2018-19 school year. Four, approve submit grant application Poetry Out Loud 2018-2019 school year. Five, approve contract SNAP fundraising service provider Girls Basketball 2018-19 school year. Six, approve contract Raritan Valley Bus Service field trip service provider 2018-19 school year. Seven approved contract double day field agreement 2018-19 school year. Eight approved contract Supreme Productions DJ service provider junior senior prom 2018-19 school year. Nine approved contract Miguel Conception sound technician service provider elementary school 2018-19 school year. Ten approved cement accept elementary and secondary education act ES BA, Consolidated Application Carryover Funds, Fiscal Year 2018. 11, Approved Contract, Michael Follin, Presenter, Middle School 2018-19 School Year. 12, Approved Contract, Frontline Education Professional Development Service Provider, 2018-19 School Year. 13, Approved Tax Requisition. 14, Approved Line Item Transfers. 15, Approved Requisition List. And I would just like to comment on the Poetry Out Loud. Um, that they just had, and I heard it was wonderful. Um, so congratulations to the English teachers for their annual event. Does anybody have any questions? That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> there are four items on the agenda this evening. Number one, approved professional development and travel expenses 2018-19 school year. Approved field trips 2018-19 school year. Approve out of district placement and home instruction 2018 19 school year and approved textbook Century 21 Accounting Multi Column Journal High School Accounting 1, 2, and 3. Just to comment on that last one, Century 21 has nothing to do with a real estate company. It's the title of the book that goes back to before Century 21 real estate existed. So uh, it's, uh, it, it's a, and also, it's not a new text for us. It's an update. It's the most recent edition. So uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Trevisano uh, approves it and recommends it to the uh, instruction committee who recommends it to you. Any questions on that? Mr. Carter, negotiations? Yeah, under negotiations tonight, you will be taking action on a sidebar agreement with the SREA. The purpose for this sidebar agreement, for anyone who has not talked about it or, or seen it, uh, in the, I believe it's in the packet, but uh, your contract under Article 13 <coughs> provides a mechanism for when coverage is necessary due to staffing needs for somebody to teach six periods rather than the standard five during school day. The contract does not contemplate the circumstance which we're now facing this year as of October 1st where a couple of teaching staff members are obligated 
just for staffing purposes, emergent staffing uh, needs, to teach seven periods a day. That does not leave a lot of periods in the day. So we needed to create rules of engagement, which are based on your blue slip payment, uh, extra compensation for additional work, which is this, this clearly is. It will take effect. It will be the same equivalent as blue slip payment. It will apply only when the teachers are doing this extra, extra service. Uh, and it resolves the concerns that we had of how exactly is this going to work. That's not the kind of question you want to leave hanging out there in public employment and with a collective bargaining agreement. So we fixed the glitch, and now we have an agreement. Uh, questions about it? Uh, I know that this uh, came across. The superintendent and I worked on this with the SREA to make sure that we were providing the services because that's really what we're all here for. And uh, we got it done. If there are any concerns, please feel free to ask now. And other than that, Mr. Wailuda, we will be starting negotiations in January with the SREA. Right, okay. Just one item tonight, sir. Approve first reading <coughs> revised policy number 5131.1, HID. 20 items, sir. One, approve resignation, Jennifer Scheiblin, registered nurse. Two, approve resignation, Carla D. Oliveria, lunch aide. Three, approved transfer Jordan Fish from primary slash elementary school music teacher to middle school music teacher. Four, approve appoint additional lunch aides slash substitute lunch aides 2018-2019 school year. Five, approve appoint mentor. Six, approve appoint additional adult education staff 2018-2019 school year. Seven, approve disability, sick, family leave, Rachel Barra, middle school special education teacher 2018-2019 school year. Eight, approved disability, maternity, family leave, Erica Lazanfama, middle school teacher, 2018-19 school year. Nine, approved donation of sick days, employee number 4959, 2018-2019 school year. Ten, approve appoint co-curricular staff, high school, 2018-2019 school year. Eleven, approve appoint Camila Buffalino, coordinator of preschool expansion grant for the 2018-2019 school year. 12, approve appoint Raymond Dorso, coordinator of preschool expansion program, 2018-2019 school year. 13, approve appoint additional substitutes slash clerical substitutes for the 2018-2019 school year. 14, approve appoint Christina Kelly, registered nurse, 2018-2019 school year. 15, approve appoint Vincent Stasio, middle school science lead replacement teacher, 2018-2019 school year. 16, approve appoint additional coaching staff, 2018-2019 school year. Season 17, approved disability sick leave, Michael Lepore, high school physical education health teacher, 2018 2019 school year. 18, approved disability sick, maternity, unpaid leave of absence, Brittany Montoro, primary school teacher, 2018 2019 school year. 19, approved intermittent family leave, Michelle Widman, elementary school teacher, 2018 2019 school year. 20, approved intermittent family leave, Stephanie Gonella. Primary school special education teacher 2018 2019 school year. And that's it. No what? Michelle Whitman, she's a secretary. The secretary, not a did teacher. Did I say secretary? You said teacher. I did not. Teacher. Oh, I'm sorry. Elementary okay. 19 is intermittent family leave. Michelle Whitman, elementary school secretary 2018 19 school year. Thank you, Kelly, for catching that. No problem. Anyone else? 19, 20. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. I have two items on the agenda tonight. Uh, number one, approve annual review of the memorandum of agreement between education and law enforcement officials. And number two, approve route number T282, the Coastal Learning Center Educational Services Commission of New Jersey, 2018-2019 school year. That's all. Okay, at this time we'll open the meeting to the public. Is there any comments or questions on the item that have been discussed for the item listed? Any comments or questions, please be scanned in the name to Zoom. And then no comments on the item is pending. Anyone from New York? Uh, call. <coughs> Close the public portion of the meeting. The South River Board of Education, by means of a consent resolution, adopt various resolutions of routine and non-controversial nature at one time, 
whereas the below list of resolutions are hereby adopted by said Board of Education in whole as of the same were individually acted upon from the superintendent's report item number two and from the finance <coughs> items one through 15 under instructions items one through four and the negotiations item one, policy and legislation item one, human resources items one through 20 and safety and risk <laughs> items one and two. Move to consent. Move to consent resolution. Motion, Mr. Santana. Second. Second by Mr. Screws. Comments? Roll call. Mr. Andre? Yes. Mr. Bazak? Yes. Mrs. Beck? Yes. Mrs. Cruz? Yes. Mr. Nielsen? Yes. Mr. Rosano? Yes. Mrs. Rabanek? Yes. Mr. Wailuda? Yes. Motion so carried. <coughs> And I have community relations, Mr. Hanson? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I have four items on the agenda. The first one, middle school honor roll. Our first quarter honor roll is listed and posted on the district's, the district middle school's website. Congratulations to everyone who earned honor roll. Number two, high school, Princeton Prize for Distinguished Secondary School Teaching. South River High School is very proud to announce that the social studies teacher, Mr. Adam Weiss, was nominated as an outstanding secondary school teacher. If selected, he will be honored by Princeton University for his contributions to the lives of the state's secondary school students and their school communities. Congratulations. Number three, High School Hats and Scarves Fundraiser, sponsored by the High School Music Program. The South River High School Music Program will be selling South River Ram hats and scarves starting Friday, December 14th to Friday, January 4th. Help support the music program by purchasing a hat or scarf from the students in the band and chorus. If you have any questions or would like to place an order, please contact Mr. McDowell by email or by phone at 732-613-4014, extension 6235. And last, the High School Student of the Month, November 2018. Haley DeZito is a November Student of the Month due to her commitment to service and leadership in our school and community. Haley is very, Haley is very involved in the community with the Happy Homes Animal Rescue, Girl Scouts, and with St. Stephen's as a lector. She also gives her time assisting the middle school drama production. Within South River High School, Haley is very active with the Student Council. Her outstanding achievements, achievements don't stop there. Haley also exemplifies what it means to be a leader as co-president of the National Honor Society and the Future Business Leaders of America, as well as Secretary of the Future Healthcare Professionals Club at South River High School. She also represented South River at the New Jersey U O'Brien Youth Leadership Seminar. Additionally, Haley represents South River High School as a member of the varsity bowling and varsity soccer teams and has been awarded both the Scholar Athlete Award and the so Soccer Coaches Award. She currently is ranked second in her class of 2019. Hunter Nemeth is a November student of the month due to his commitment to school and community. In the community, Hunter volunteers at a Second Chance Pantry and My Swim Friends, My Sports Friends, where he works with children with and without special needs. His roles in the community earned him the Bishop D, I'm sorry, the Bishop G. D. Brown Community Award. Hunter is very involved in the South River High School community, competing on the varsity baseball, varsity cross country, and basketball teams. He is a member of the National Honor Society and treasurer of the class of 2019. While keeping busy with service and leadership, he also works part-time taking classes at the honors and AP level. Congratulations to both Haley and Hunter, and that's all I have. Anyone else like to add? <coughs> Anything for the council, Mr. Scrooge? I have no update for this evening. And the PT and Mrs. Beck? I can tell you that they're all uh, working on the um, their fundraisers for all the activities they do in the springtime and all the different programs they have going on. Um, the dates for the ne for next month, now the elementary school is not having one in again until um, the February meeting, which is the general, thank you, is that one. Um, they'll have one then, and otherwise the dates are all on the uh, district's website. I have nothing at this time. So Dr. Trevisano attended the public library uh, liaison meeting, and um, he did come back with just uh, information about different programs and resources to be distributed to um, principals in the school related to the library, and we sent those in uh, in an e-ram. Last week's e-ram, if I recall. Yeah. Mrs. Becker, you think any education um, Didn't talk to uh, Mrs. Bush today, but I do know <coughs> that the Education Foundation has their dinner dance on Friday, February 1st. Any information can be found out um, on their Facebook page, SF SRF. Mr. Murray? Yes, just briefly, Mr. Wailuda. We do have agreement uh, on a shared services agreement with the 
borough that you've been hearing about for some time now. We're happy to have a draft document, which I'm handing out now. Uh, if you would take one and pass them, except Victoria, if you would pass them all. Um, this is a document that's being provided to all of you for your review prior to action in January. I spoke to the Assistant Borough Council today, Brian Bontempo, and we are good to go for January. Uh, at this point, this is a draft, so it is important that you familiarize yourself with it and gain comfort with it, but it is not publicly accessible, nor publicly available, nor publicly shareable at this point. So please keep it to yourselves. Um, it is the officers in the schools who have been in place for this whole school year, and this is just discussing our mutual rights and obligations uh, towards those arrangements for the safety of the students. Well, if everything goes well, we should be voting on the contract January 1st. Yes, if everything goes well, we'll okay. do it on January 1st. Yes. Uh, if, January. if for any reason that does not happen, Mr. Wailuda, we would do it at the regular January meeting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're talking about a global 2018-19 payment arrangement, so we're already at the point where we're paying retro towards services that we have agreed to and uh, had the benefit of. So I would like to say definitely yes for January 1st, but uh, as a lawyer, I'll just say probably yes for January 1st. <laughs> uh, but the language is all set, uh, and the delay was lengthy, but worth the wait because there's nothing more important than this. Thank you. And our student rep. Yes, I would like to say something very quickly. Uh, get her a microphone. Yeah, can you get her a microphone? So on the behalf of Take a Step, we would like to thank the board and Ms. Zercher and Mr. Sherman for all the support you've been showing our club. It's a relatively new club. We started it in May of, of last year. So with that being said, thank you for sharing our videos and our productions and everything on your Facebook where it's accessible to everybody, not just everybody, not just the high school students or the teachers. So our last video got a few thousand views and shares and likes and stuff, and that's great because it helps not just the students, but it also shows their parents and things like that how great Southern High School really is and how much the students and the teachers care about each other. So yes, thank you so much for all the support you've been showing the club, and yeah, I hope you continue to be supportive of us, basically. I understand so, you were instrumental in that uh, project? Uh, yes, uh, yes I was. Uh, I started, <laughs> I mean, I, I had the idea to start the club May of last year, and then I, I started the club, and I really like editing and filming and producing videos like that, so it was my idea, and then everybody else in the club, we kind of just put our heads together and came up with a video that seems, most people seem to like it and enjoy it, so, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Thank you. For thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Yes, that enough piece of paper. Good. Okay. <laughs> Counts me up. <laughs> we'll make sure I'll you see you. it. We'll make sure you see it. Mr. Aluda, if I may. Uh, <coughs> you heard Mr. Dorso uh, talk about social emotional learning, and that's a very big thing this year. As he said, we'll be hearing about it a lot more as time goes on. Uh, I found out about that in uh, October when we went down to Atlantic City for the convention. There were several sessions on social emotional learning. And there were sometimes two a day, so if you miss the first one, you get the second one. That is so important, which I learned in college back in the Stone Age. But still, human development behavior hasn't changed all that much, okay? Uh, and it is highly, highly important and, and integral for good grades and good learning. Uh, also, at the uh, <coughs> NJSBA Delegate Assembly I went to about three weeks ago, the NJSBA is strongly behind social and emotional learning and will offer us whatever uh, assistance, except for financial, of course, but whatever assistance that we need uh, in order to implement that research, all kinds of research, and so on. Um, let's see. I was happy, along with some other board members and Mrs. Zercher, to attend uh, the National Honor Society induction ceremony. And i got to tell you, 23 kids who meet stringent requirements in a school population of, what, 2,100 or so? That's amazing. Every one of them deserved to be in there. You know, I mean, if, uh, when I was listening to what their accomplishments were, I was just amazed. It was just great. Now, last May, so congratulations to all of them. Last May, um, I 
noted uh, the schools that our kids were accepted to. So I'm bringing this up now because I'm going to say this one again in May, but uh, I thought it was really cool. I want to bring it out tonight. One of our graduating seniors has been accepted to Princeton University. So all those who say our school system isn't good, no, you know, you're wrong. You're just wrong. And in, in May, I'll show that again, just like I did last year. And, uh, uh, you know, Princeton, uh, we also have a National Merit Scholarship student. And, uh, and again, National Honor Society, have 21 kid, uh, 23 kids who meet those stringent requirements is really a feather in our district's cap. And their cap, too. I mean, they all deserve it. They worked hard and, and deserve to be there. But, you know, I'm just tired of hearing the school system being run down by members of the general public. So I'm offering little bits and pieces of proof that this is a great school district. And I, with that, I wish all of my colleagues here at the table and everyone here in the audience and those watching at home a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to just add to what Tony said. There were 23 inducted. There were also a dozen or so that are um, back from last year who are um, seniors this year. So we actually have about, like, I want to say, do the math for me, 35, 35 that are, are in the, the National Honor Society out of 557 students in the high school. Um, I would also like to let you know um, you're going to enjoy putting together your list in May. There are some great schools that I've been seeing posted on Facebook, many of them with merit scholarships attached to their offers. So um, while I know we only hear about the schools that the children commit to, um, many of them are getting multiple offers with multiple merit scholarships. Mm -hmm. So I want to congratulate all of our, our seniors on all the hard work they've put in um, and all of those that are getting these acceptance notices now. Um, I'd also like to do a shameless plug for Project Graduation. Um, the kitchen is now open for all home games. Feel free to come down and eat dinner while you're watching either the girls or boys basketball games. Um, we have our dance, our adult dinner dance for February 8th. Um, if anybody needs tickets, I know someone who's selling them. Um, and we also have our pocketbook bingo backed by popular demand um, on March 8th. And we'll be here in the high school cafetorium. I think you're going to be very excited with the bags. Um, a lot of people are, are already buying tickets because we have pictures out um, and they're, they're very excited. So if you need a ticket for that, I know someone who's also selling those. <laughs> Those two dates again, Ms. Cruz? We kept it simple, February 8th for the dinner and March 8th oh. for the pocketbook bingo. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Happy holidays to everyone. Let's, uh, motion for payment of bills. The Finance Committee recommends that all bills presented having been certified by the School Business Administrator, Board Secretary be paid as listed, and I so move. Mr. Second. Second, Mr. Nielsen. Adam. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, so carried. This time we welcome the meeting to the public. Any comments or questions may be read whatsoever. Please limit your comments or questions to 10 minutes and please ask to give us your name and address. Then we can do it. Last call. We got a mover. Oh, here we go. Good. Everybody. My name is Zanetta Link, 77 Armstrong Avenue, also a paraprofessional in the school district at the preschool. My understanding we're extending our preschool hours. We were told by Mission One um, that they'll be extending our hours, but not increasing our pay. Not the case. Your pay is being increased for those 15 minutes. Yep. For the 15 minutes, because yeah. the last email I got from our at 540, they said it's still going to be the same rate. No. So that's why I'm asking. Nope, nope. Okay. We discussed that just a today. Few minutes, okay, yeah. and that <laughs> solves You're my good. issue because at 540, she said it's remaining at the same time. Yeah. Okay. No. You're good. That's all I'm good. Thank you. Have a good yeah. holiday. You too. You too. Anyone else in the room? Anyone? Close the public portion. Interesting the motion for adjournment. Nielsen. Back. Nielsen. Thank you, Mr. Peck. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.